see a church that has come to its senses because this country is largely a Christian state even though we have some other diverse uh, religious groups. And as Christians, we teach ourselves to be very truthful. And finally, the church has been true to its feelings that the state of the nation is not what is being perceived because Kenyans at the very bottom have a different story of exactly what's happening in the country. And uh, particularly for established churches, because that's what you're trying to differentiate, you know, uh, the Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, historically churches that have been in this country for quite a very long time and have an extremely long history of agitation when you look at the history of the country from uh, right after independence and then the struggle for multi-party, the new constitution. The church was at, uh, in many ways at the heart of that struggle. And so when we came in uh, this particular regime, which came in in a very godly manner, and uh, it ran on a, on, a, on, a, on a religious platform, and uh, they, they said it's the government of God, and that uh, anybody that does not believe in this particular government then does not believe in God which is a terrible assumption to make because uh, we all love our God differently. But uh, I think uh, we're in a better place now that the church, which is a critical ingredient of our society because most of us belong to churches. I believe, Fred, uh, all of us understand that as kids, uh, many of us were Christians, pretty much went through the Sunday school system. Then we had, uh, back in the 90s and the early 2000s, those of us were schooling. Then we had the CRE, the religious education. So throughout that particular system, you are told certain uh, values that uh, as a human being you should be uh, uh, very alive to. And I think the church has picked up where, where it left just before this regime coming. I was curious that you mentioned uh, CRE and IRE, and uh, when it 